Hey everyone, welcome to Stethoscope. Today, in this video, the subject is to learn how to approach section 1 of the IMAT. The first thing to say is section 1 is very very preparable. In this part, the questions are divided into two main categories and these are the two main modules of the IMAT. Firstly, general knowledge and secondly, logical reasoning. For the general knowledge part, I have already uploaded a video about the question analysis and for better preparation, I will be regularly uploading shorts about literature, general, scientific and economic culture, Nobel Prize, history, politics, Italian politics, European politics, European landmarks, metropolitan states, organization of European Union and many more. The second part is logical reasoning, which is further divided into critical thinking and problem solving and data interpretation. The important thing about section 1, I think, when preparing for the IMAT is to recognize that critical thinking is where we can very easily get a lot of marks. And the reason for that is critical thinking follows a very formula pattern when it comes to the questions. There are only about 6 to 7 question types and they ask the same questions again and again. It's only the passage of the text that changes. So all we need for critical thinking is to get some legit techniques down to tackle these seven different question types. And once you have done that, we can just do a lot of practice and apply it to any questions that comes our way. So when doing a critical thinking paper, it is quite feasible to get all the questions right. All right, so there are effectively only seven different type of questions they can ask you in critical thinking and we are going to be tackling the strategy for each one of them and then we are going to be going through the same example questions and I'll show you how to approach these questions. Anyway, let's talk about the seven question types. The number one is summarizing the main conclusion. Then we have drawing a conclusion. Then comes identifying an assumption. The fourth question type is to assess the impact of additional evidence. The way critical thinking works is that they give you a passage of text, maybe four to five lines, and they ask you a question. They might ask you which of the following best expresses the main conclusion of the argument, or which of the following is an assumption in the argument, or which of the following is the best flaw in the argument. As we said earlier, IMAT is a multiple choice. You are going to get five options. So you will get a passage of text, a question and five options. So for critical thinking, it's better to follow three step method. Step number one is to read the full question. And by question, we mean this little text that says what is a conclusion or what is the assumption or what is the flaw. We should absolutely not read the passage first. Reading the passage first is the biggest waste of time in critical thinking. Let's please not read the passage first. We need to be reading the question first because once we have read the question, then we can read the passage because if the question asks us to find the conclusion, we can be in conclusion mode as we are hunting through the passage. So step number one is to always read the question first. Step number two is to read the passage and ideally you should be underlining the conclusion. Now this applies even if the question is not asking us to find a conclusion. The reason we say you should be underlining the conclusion as you are reading through the passage is because finding a conclusion is often a very helpful thing to be doing. Finding a conclusion helps you for assumption questions, flaw questions and strengthening and weakening questions. Step number three is to discard and decide. And what we mean by this is you need to eliminate the options that are not the answer and pick one. One thing I'd mention here is that you should be practicing the cover test, which means you cover up the answers and you see if you can work on the answer before looking at the answer choices. And this is a good habit to get into for IMAT. Let's say that they are asking you to find a conclusion and you have underlined a conclusion or they ask you to find a flaw. And after you read the question first and then the passage, if you have already found the flaw and you have an answer in your head that this might be the flaw, picking between the five different answer choices, you are looking for that one that matches which you already have in your head and that's a big thing to do the main reason why this is a good thing to do is because if you ever had an experience with multiple choice exam you'll know that it's true 
it's very easy for us to leave ourselves down towards the wrong path when we see the answers because you think that it could be a i'm pretty sure it's c but what if it's a or b and this sort of stuff happens when we don't have an answer in our head so if we do the cover test and we work on the answer choices then it becomes very easy we just pick the answer that matches and we don't overthink overthinking is a big source of confusion and missed marks in section 1 so that's the general method for critical thinking in our next video we'll talk about the problem solving question as they are a little bit more difficult till then take care of yourselves thanks for watching